Hello, everybody. It is a wonderful Friday afternoon. It's currently September the 13th, and we're here for another, I'm sorry, Wednesday, for another day of Squad Ops. We're rolling two sessions here today, uh, just like all the, all the times. This is SquadOps.gg, one life event. Today, we are hosting Operation Open Road, which is a Russia versus America uh, operation. America is tasked with defending the airfield at the south on our marks right here. You can see the the airfield right now being marked by the U.S. team for their defensive and offensive positions for the Russian. And the Russians are here starting in the far, far north at Russia, Maine, uh, using mechanized infantry to take the airfield, or at least attempt to. Uh, my name's Karmakut. I'm the founder and director here at Squad Ops. I'm joined by Penn, our mixer and man behind the scenes. And we're here for a great, great night of Squad Ops. Once again, we do run two sessions. Uh, the first session, we'll have... Uh, let's take a look at the teams here. First session, we'll have Best Pony, Chappie, Fulcrum and Krusty the Sailor squad leading for the Russians with Shadowed Ritual, the Emperor, commanding for the Russians. And on the opposite team, we're going to have Schmitty, Satan, Dessa, LaRue, and Expert commanding for the U.S. And then on the next round, we'll swap teams and uh, whoever's on U.S. will uh, currently on U.S. will be on Russia and Russia will then swap to U.S. So both players get to play both sides. Uh, if you're interested in squadops.gg, our training or our events, go ahead and drop by uh, squadops.gg to learn more. YouTube.com slash squadops and twitch.tv slash squadops. The teams right now are getting ready for their briefings, as always, and we're going to listen in to the Russian plan. Um, yeah, and that's the plan. Are there any questions? Oh, no questions. Oh, wow. Like, that was an now, extremely... Though. An extremely fast Should brief. Go, uh, we only yeah. caught the very end of it there. They're going to be mounting up and doing a frontal assault with the BTRs, and we're going to see how that works out. Uh, we're going to show you a cool little overlay now uh, regarding the operation as a whole, regarding assets and objectives, and that was made by our great content creation team. So we're going to roll that for you right here. Uh, and so you'll be able to see the assets for both teams, the kits uh, as far as you know, GLs or MGs or medics and then the vehicles as well you can see that us gets two times humvees uh Lodgy runs and then the russians get two times btrs and one times uh mtlb uh, you'll also see as we switch here to the second slide you'll see uh the operation event rules so the scenario is that the U.S. have pushed off a Russian attack and they're defending the airfield now for further reinforcements to arrive. And the Russians are mounting a counter assault on the uh, air for, uh, on the airfield to take it back using their mechanized infantry. Uh, so that's the uh, current operation, Doc. And uh, we're going to be running with that here in a second. Uh, Russia team is already set for live. Once again, this is a one life event. So players all get one life. The second they go down, they cannot be medic revived. And they must give up for the rest of the match. Uh, we'll go over a couple of the Russian assets here. Uh, uh, one of them being the Tony, BTR. BTR the now, the BTR, the as a menacing as it looks, oh, it is not actually a tank. It is an armored personnel carrier. It is a... Very, very light infantry fighting vehicle for light fire support and transport. This thing can go head to head with the strikers with proper positioning, uh, but it's definitely something that you want to be uh, wary about using on the uh, battlefield as it is rather thin, uh, thin skinned. Two to three RPGs or laws with uh, combined HMG fire can take down these uh, BTRs rather quickly. The second armor asset that the Russians are using tonight will be the MTLB. The MTLB is a much, much lighter and louder version of the BTR. Uh, you'll see some stats here, as always, to compare to the BTR, and you'll kind of see that this vehicle is kind of weaker than the BTR, but it is able to get that job done with light fire support and transport. Uh, we've got the Russian team all set here, ready to go live. They're mounted up into their vehicles. Uh, they're going to be doing a frontal assault on the objective, and we're going to see how that goes for them. All right, we're going to zip on over to the U.S. defense and see what they're doing from a uh, overhead perspective here. Can't really shoot below out anymore. He's gonna take the east OP with a fire team. You're now spectating Xbit, who is the U.S. commander for today, and. Uh, We'll see what now, the U.S. Squad, have in plan uh, for two, the Russians down sorry, at airfield. Squad 1 and uh, 3 will be leaving a fire team each at the FOB location, which they'll help build it up and defend it. And they will also assign them as drivers of the Lodgy so they can make Lodgy runs. So the idea is that the OP Humvees are just there to scout. As soon as we get eyes on, they're going to go hide. 
We're going to wait for the BTRs to either set and wait for the Lodgies. So they might be setting up in the same kind of southeast area where the east hand, eastern uh, OP was. The Humvees are going to creep up, take some shots, and then fall back. They're going to harass the vehicles. We're going to delay them as much as we can. If they do approach from the Central Novo, they'll be dismounting their infantry. It'll be a good ambush spot for our troops, and uh, they, all, they obviously have a good way to get back to us if they need to, but it's a little bit open. But the idea is if they do dismount the infantry, which they might do in Central Novo, there should be a pretty good firefight up there. And once again, it limits the BTRs and APC because they have to come into the urban environment to put shots on. So once again, better for our lats, not for them. So the Humvees will be on the outside flanking and, you know, wolf packing whatever they do, taking shots as they can, setting out their lats as they see fit. The Lodgies will go hide once they uh, show themselves and we will use the Lodgies sparingly afterwards. Um, so we might sneak them in for a run and back to airfield and then they'll go disappear someplace on the map again. So basically waste the Russians time and delay them so that we can build more stuff on our little uh, central fob location. Um, if we don't take any contact in Central Nova, those two squads will load up in the trans, come back to airfield, and set up in the east, uh, south, or sorry, northeastern buildings or the southeastern side of the thing. Or they will take the the, uh, the trans and get mobile with the Humvees, and actually form a squad or platoon line wherever the uh, infantry is dismounted and engage them in the field. So a lot of fighting off of the objective of airfield tonight. Any questions? Uh, one of the vehicles is already on airfield. Which squad is that? Uh, I'll let... I'll, two, uh, two Humvees. Yeah, there's two Humvees. I'll let Odessa and uh, Schmitty fight about who gets which one. I, I'm pretty sure Jack <laughs> Jack left that one all right. He didn't leave any candy wrappers or anything bad in there, so... Anything else? It is on four wheels, correct? I hope so. Hey, expert. <laughs> That's a valid question. Yes. <laughs> um... Did it ever occur to you that once we are on airfield, we're going to cap it, and then the two squads are going to cap Central Novo? That's fine. Sir, okay. no, sir. Uh, Expert, do you want both lats on Mark my, with you, or should I send them in the Humvee? I would take them in the Humvee. Uh, I've got a quick one. Yeah. Um, I might have missed it. It might have just been a part that kind of like uh, slipped my hearing, but... What's our contingency if uh, their armor decides to wrap really far west and um, attack from the south, or rather just use their machine guns to suppress us from the south? Do we have right. in that direction? Yeah, we're going to try to get down. The First, we're going to do a Hesco wall, and then we're going to do HMGs pointing out to the uh, four directions, the four kind of like northwest, north, uh, you know, northeast. Oh, okay, one to each direction. Right. Okay. For Where... some reason, I was under the impression we would have two to the west. Well, if we can get four, yeah. The first primary will be the western and then the eastern. So if they do set up on the distance, well, hopefully the Humvees will flush them off. I mean, the BTRs are pretty ineffective uh, from distance if you just stay in cover, right? The eject is for them to get our radio. If they can't get to it, then they're not going to get it. They're going to have to push infantry on foot over open ground, and that's where hopefully the team inside the Hesco uh, castle we'll be able to fend them off in time for the infantry or whatever assets we have on the outside to either come and assist us or flush off the BCRs and assist us from the outside. All right, for sure. All right, well, any other questions, ask your squad leaders, let's get this rolling. Um, we're gonna load up in some vehicles. They're gonna get your kit set and everything. So, good luck, everybody. I'll load up in the trans. All right. All right, as you can see, that was the U.S. plan. Right now, we're going to be rolling over to the objective area. We're flying over the airfield right now. As you can see, on the northeastern side, there are a couple of admin buildings, uh, warehouses and such that the U.S. can use if they so choose. We do have one U.S. Humvee out here already. Uh, and then looking over the entirety of the airfield, we have an exterior fence that will block any infantry movement onto the airfield. There are select areas where those infantry can breach a fence uh, in the openings in the fence. Uh, there are a couple pre-made fighting uh, positions on the airfield, a couple little sandbag pits that the U.S. can use if they so choose, but they do get repeated, uh, repeated lodgy runs, so they can get resupplied on the point. With the additional points, they can continue building up the defenses with HESCO walls as well as sandbags and uh, create more... Uh, uh, excuse me, can create solid uh, defense positions. Uh, looking over the uh, the airfield as a whole, there's very few cover actually on the airfield, so we're going to see how much the U.S. decides to build. 
But uh, yeah, with the armor that the Russians get, these vehicles are going to be able to lock down a large amount of the airfield at distance simply because that line of sight is very open on this airfield, as you can see here. Just the fence mainly on the exterior and then a couple sandbag firing positions within the compound already. So we'll see how Xbit decides to place his points and use those HESCO walls and use those sandbags to create a defense. Right here we have one of the U.S. Humvees. This is one of the assets that they're going to be able to use. It's a very light vehicle here. We're getting in the center for you, and I'll pull up some stats regarding the Humvee. But the Humvee is going to be very important for the U.S. defense right now because they are going to be able to maneuver and outflank the BTRs if they're caught in the correct position. They cannot go head-to-head -head with the MTLBs or the BTRs. They need to use those flanks in order to catch those armored vehicles off guard. And this 50 cal will do a great amount of damage. It's just a question of if they can get that Humvee in the correct position. Because if they get caught one-on-one one -on -one with a BTR or an MTLB, those vehicles do have more armor and more health to disable the Humvees. As we can hear, those lodgies rolling in now, bringing the U.S. troops and supplies. Uh, they're going to be setting up here, and we're going to be looking at going live here within the, ne the next uh, five minutes. So uh, everyone sit tight, get ready, because we're going to be uh, in for a really cool mechanized infantry versus U.S. FOB defense here on the airfield tonight. Um, looking at the map as a whole, there's a large amount of distance between the airfield and Russian main. This is intended so that the U.S. have a chance to run those lodges replies. Looking at the map, you have a short distance, maybe about 500 meters between the airfield and the uh, U.S. main for those lodges to make those drops. That's going to allow them to get two, three, maybe even four lodge drops before the Russians cross about uh, 1,500, almost 2,000 meters of land here with their vehicles, uh, depending on how fast ex uh, shadowed ritual ritual decides to push on that gas uh we'll see how that u.s defense holds up they know uh, we know that we're going to hold uh the vehicles outside excuse me the humvees outside to flank the armor as they come in we see the u.s troops now moving into the point um and yeah it's going to be interesting interesting to see how experts going to cancel these large guys. large uh Plenty lines of sight right on this on open them, field but to uh, keep those BTRs at bay. Oh, exactly. We're, we're fucking... We're going to go to the normal. Yeah. We have to start at... I gotta wait. Yeah, we have to start at airfield. Yes, you have to start at airfield. You must start at okay. airfield. Where they're at? It might be at airfield. This is the FOB that the U.S. is placing down. This is the, the right? objective for the operation. The Russians need to destroy this FOB. Uh, and this is going to be pretty much the center point or the centerpiece behind Xbit's defense. He's going to ensure that he has all the po uh, places and the defensive Fucking positions uh, centered around the FOB just to ensure that he can control that asset. That wall, right uh, we're going to zoom in right here and show you what a FOB does. We have another overlay that uh, we've uh, created, and we're just going to show you that real fast. A really cool location for this FOB. Uh, it is in the center of the field, so... If the uh, U.S. does get cut off from this position, it's going to be quite difficult for them to retake the FOB location simply because those BTRs, like I said before, can't control that entire field with those lines of sight. Uh, so we're going to see how much uh, the U.S. can can try to push off the uh, Russian assault. But if the Russians ever get control over that little tent area with the BTRs, it's going to be incredibly difficult for the U.S. to run out here and try to defend it. As you can see, once again, around this tent, aside from the tent and the sandbags, there's nothing around the tent that the U.S. can use as cover unless they build it for about 100 to fit 150 meters. All right, live in two, one. All right, we're live. All right, we're live here. We're going to see these vehicles dump their supplies. We're going to see the initial uh, emplacements put down by the U.S. here. We can see the vehicles on, pushing out. Yeah, we're full up here. We can't. I've got a guy in the yeah, Pick up in the MTLB. Get him in the MTLB. MTLB, hold up. He's with you for now. The vehicle reverse and you can see that so U.S. squad earlier that was moving to uh, Central Nova. You can't mark on the map on the ops. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, can we, uh, where are we concealing this thing? I don't have that many options. And uh, we'll see how this defense at Central Nova looks. Um, the, the, the spreading the forces out is a great idea, especially Take because you're able to cover a lot more ground as well as maneuver and uh, flank uh, the Russians, depending on what 
He's gonna be where you're coming from. We're out here on the far, far edge of the sky right now, about uh, 2,000 meters up in the sky right now, and you can kind of see the overlaying environment around the uh, airfield. You can see that Central Novo, which is north of the airfield. The airfield at the top of my screen, Central Novo at the uh, bottom end of my screen, uh, but we are flipped around here. So north is that top, and the south is that. Uh, excuse me, the south is the top, and the north is at the bottom here. Uh, you can see the Americans choosing to take positions within Central Novo, and that will allow them pressure and uh, allow them to react in case the Russians decide to take Central Novo. They'll have a squad there in place to kind of uh, not only delay but disrupt that assault. But looking around the other parts of the airfield, you can see that on the far south, west, and east, there are very, very little uh, cover for anyone to hide. And if the U.S. spreads themselves out too too thin, they're going to have a lot of a lot of, uh, a lot of trouble dealing with a combined mechanized assault from the uh, Russians with both BTRs and even the MTLB within positions to support each other. Simply because if the U.S. spreads themselves too thin, Russians are going to be able to punch through that defense on one side. So we'll see how that spread defense works out for them. Uh, we can uh, see how big this map is. Looking over here, that's the airfield. We have storage down here. And then just on the far end of the side, we have a uh, the BTRs. Let's go. As we can see here, Muff is uh, live now. We are in the BTRs of the Russians pushing south, fast southwest, uh, attempting to get in position for their assault. Uh, we're going to travel behind these BTRs here and see uh, if they reach contact, if they're spotted, um, and what kind of avenue of approach X Shadow does decide to take on his final. Uh, Final push here. They can change the or, uh, game. We can see they that these uh, roads really do allow the BTRs to move quite rapidly, uh, not having to worry about trees, ditches, or rocks. And as they veer off road here, their speed is going to slow down considerably uh, just because they are going to have to watch out for uh, obstacles in the way. But it looks like Shadow's deciding to take both of his BTRs on the far west flank here. There is a Humvee from the U.S. if you can see on my map. There's a Humvee that is warding this west for the uh, U.S. So we'll see if that Humvee is able to pick up the, on either that sound or see these BTRs rolling in the far west. The MTLB is uh, pushing straight north to south. As you can see, crossing the uh, lower Petrivka line right now. He's going to be pushing directly down onto Central Novo. That is the main uh, distraction. For the Russians, we have about two infantry squads here on the west with these BTRs. So that's about 18 men plus two armored vehicles. This is where the majority of the assault is going to happen from the west. We see uh, Russia now dismounting their infantry. Uh, and they're going to start spreading out along this line. That Humvee over there uh, in the distance, you can't really see it from here. But if they're paying attention, these BTRs are rather large. So if they're able to spot this flank, U.S. can adjust in time, set up a line of defense and uh you know essentially just set up more emplacements and a uh and better positioning for this attack on the west this uh infantry squad dropped off in this arena this is squad three led by fulcrum he's going to be pushing along the deflate here and he's going to try to get as quietly and as close uh, to the objective as he can. We do have squad one from the Americans out here. He doesn't seem to see the uh, the Russians or even hear them for that matter. We're going to zip on over to see what they can actually see from their position. They're still about 500, almost 900 meters out from the Russians. So once again, Yehorivka, an extremely large map. This is a large amount of land that is in between both the Russians and the U.S. currently. Uh, 900 meters is outside of any audible range of all these vehicles. Uh, even the MTLB, which we all know to be extremely loud. We can see the gunner here scanning these sides, but he's not going to be able to see anything. They do have some elevation here, but Russians are on the uh, far west. As you can see, those little blue lights all the way out there. They are using the defilade to get underneath this uh, vehicle's line of sight. So unless this vehicle rolls into the ditch on its north, I don't think that that infantry squad is going to get spotted. And uh, they're going to be pushing in here pretty uh, slowly and securely. So we're going to see how close squad 3 gets before they're engaged. We do have that MTLB. I do believe they've been spotted and or heard on the northeast. We're going to go fly over to see uh, where the MTLB decides to take contact or is engaged on. Uh, because I'm pretty sure that they're about to get hit by Humvee. They are now sandwiched between squad 4 and a US Humvee on the east. Uh, they're about within 300 meters of that squad four on the west of the vehicle, and that is going to make a lot of noise. You can almost hear that from about 500 meters out. Uh, that MTLB is no quiet vehicle. Uh, 
Uh, command interrogative, we dismounting here. We are not dismounting here, we're gonna get a little closer. I just want Cap. three in the M2 so get a little more. Let's get closer. It's gonna take us, it's not gonna take us. So this MTOB is going to be crossing in front of this Where first Humvee. We're going to see if this first Humvee doesn't decide to engage. Uh, it looks like they have dismounted. You can see this Humvee kind of skylining on this ridge. So they're definitely going to be able to see this. You can almost hear it from this position as well. You can see these U.S. infantrymen have dismounted. And now looking at the MTLB, that MTLB in the far open, this Humvee is going to be in position to strike here in a moment. We do also have two lat kits here. This is a lot of firepower over here on this eastern flank. If these U.S. soldiers are able to get up next to the MTLB, that entire MTLB can be destroyed uh, very quickly. With combined arms from the uh, Humvee and the lats, this this MTLB is in a lot of danger. We're going to see if that MTLB can spot and it does have his head on a swivel. But if he does not, this vehicle can end up engaging the MTLB. Instead, it looks like the MTLB going to hold, and they're going to dismount their infantry. Uh, smart timing, good timing by the uh, Russians right here. They're going to dismount in this little death right, and push so in on foot. So it looks like Shadow's going for a three, almost, uh, yeah, two almost three-pronged attack. You can see squad three off to the far west, squad uh, four in the southwest with the other infantry squad, and then the MTLB squad, squad two, pushing in from the east here. Um, we're going to see how this works out for Shadow Ritual, splitting up his forces like this. Uh, you can Once see Squad there, 4 still on Central there. Novo. And uh, we're going to take a stop by the airfield and see how the U.S. defenses have been holding up. Back it off and, and move him around that so they can flank him in an ambush when they commit them to firing on the airfield. My logic, you want to know All right, as you can see, x really using that fob as the centerpiece for his defense. He's got Hesco's wall going, Hesco walls going all up around the fob. Now, do note that U.S. gets unlimited amount of resources. Uh, so long as they can make those Lodgy runs, they can continue sending uh, supplies over here to build their points. Now, one of the important things to note here is that the, these Hesco walls are incredibly expensive. 350 supply points to build these walls. And one Lodgy only carries 1,000 points. So he can put down two of these per Lodgy on every trip. And that's probably all the U.S. points right here, including these two uh, 50 cal bunkers set in the center of the objective. Now, it's going to be interesting to see if he's able to get any more supply runs done before the Russians hit the uh, the uh, base. This is a really interesting use of the build points, using these Hesco's walls, Hesco walls to protect the FOB. We'll see if it pays out. He's uh, pretty much putting all of his supplies into one area. And... Uh, Hopefully that is able to be enough to protect this this fob. Um, but yeah, an extremely open position. He's kind of reinforced it now with Hesco walls plus uh, two bunkers here. And we're going to see if they're going to be able to hold this with this interesting uh, Hesco wall defense. It does seem that YouTube is having a bit of trouble with our streams. If you... Yeah. YouTube is having issues with the stream lag. We uh, recommend that you refresh the stream on YouTube or view on twitch.tv slash squad ops. That stream is running uh, well, but it seems as though the YouTube servers are having a bit of uh, issues with the stream right now. So you can try to refresh on the YouTube pages or head over to twitch.tv slash squad ops to get a cleaner viewing experience. There should be zero lag on the twitch.tv slash squad ops page. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, those Three YouTubes, uh, the YouTube servers are having an issue right now. All right, we're going to see how this Russian assault is doing now. Squad 3 from the Russians, now within 300 meters of that Western Humvee uh, observation post. They're, like I said before, however, in death laid and will not be seen from that Humvee unless they're in the valley as well. There's a lot of cover here, including a Ravine oh, plus... Uh, plus trees to give the uh, the Russians cover here. That vehicle not within any line of sight of these infantrymen, and they're going to be able to push in rather close uh, without uh, without being seen. Squad 2 has eyes on the Humvee already, so we're going to fly over. That is the MTLB crew led by Chappie. They're going to try to engage the Humvee. You're, you're alone, MTLB. It's your call. If you want to try and take them out, you don't have any less. Yeah, if you can take out an uh, Humvee, that'd be awesome. Squad 2 over here was the uh, team with eyes on the Humvee. They are in position to ambush enemy Lodgy trucks, so that is what they're doing over here, as well as looking out for those Humvees. They're stationed right now in the far east, maybe about 300, 400 meters away from the objective. They're going to see uh, what kind of damage they can do on the flank. 
Uh, squad four still in position on the southwest. They're waiting to uh, move in. You can see that Humvee from the east side of the airfield now shifting over to the west. Not sure why that call was made. Perhaps they spotted squad three in the ravine, but I don't think so. They're in sufficient concealment on that uh, ravine approach. But we'll see uh, how how that plan works out for x -Bit. We can see both infantry squad, squad two and squad four still in central Novo. And... Uh, yeah, hopefully uh, Expit isn't spraying himself too thin here. We have Russians really close to the objective now. Neither squads have been uh, spotted. Squad 2 now pushing in on foot from the east, getting closer to the objective on foot, making sure they don't alert the enemies to their presence with that loud MTLB. Uh, we have both Humvees on the west. Looks like they're going to be packing it up, seeing if they can uh, engage a BTR together. But once again, two times Humvees versus two times BTRs, those two Humvees will lose that engagement. These Humvees have to make sure that they flank. One of the uh, important things that they can do is wait until the BTRs engage, reveal their position, then sweep in while the gunners are uh, concerned with their current fire solutions and sweep in on the sides of the BTR, working together to rapidly deconstruct that uh, armor. Work, uh, squad 2 here now pushing in, remembering that that MTLB is extremely loud. They're holding it in the back. Uh, we'll see when Chappie decides to call that MTLB off, uh, front because that is a very, very loud vehicle once again. Squad 3 getting extremely close to the, to the objective, maybe 300 to 400 meters out now, uh, and he's still making good time and good progress with this ravine. There is no U.S. infantry in, these, uh, in the area except for the actual squad on the point, the actual squad the in you're, Central you're Novo. No he is in a good position get to get a, where he wants to go do. without being seen. And, and uh, get, uh, ah, these Humvees are actually rolling up behind the squad. Who is this back here? Who is this? This is Rocky. Rocky back here, hearing those uh, those Humvees. We've reached the Echo 13. He 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 has a, uh, and that comes through the command comms. That information being passed through. Both Humvees are now on Squad Three's position. Keep moving if you can. Uh, if it hasn't seen you, but it's on our northwest. And we'll see. Uh, We'll see if Squad 3 is actually able to engage these Humvees. These Humvees, once again, are open top, not crows. So the gunners are vulnerable to small arms fire. Copy that. It's northeast of you now. Moving southeast. Rocky, first casualty of the game. We have a saw that just uh, lights up this squad over here. So Squad 3 actually getting caught. Uh, they were spotted, and now there's uh, the Humvee squad over here uh, trying to hunt down the rest of the U.S. infantry over here. So, in interest, while, while that is bad for the uh, Russians having this squad caught by the Humvees, what this does look at is, uh, or what this does open up is the, both the Humvees are over here, and they're tied up by an infantry squad, which means both these BTRs plus the MTLB are now free to roam as needed, as both of these armored vehicles are being engaged on by infantry, and they're going to be stuck here um, in this engagement unless they decide to pull off. I think a Humvee gunner goes down here. No, we can see 50 cal rounds going trading uh, back and forth. Across this ravine. Three, how close is that Humvee to you? Humvee is approximately 75 meters north of my position. We can see the Russians trying to use GLs to engage that Humvee, get rid of that driver. Uh, looks looks like that second Humvee, however, getting a crossfire, taking out some more Russians. And Fulcum Squad here rapidly losing strength as a. Uh, he is engaged on by both these Humvees plus infantry. We're going to see okay. uh, if Shadow takes advantage of this pressure and pushes in. We do see Squad 2 from the Russians making really good time and ground here on the east. No one has spotted them. They are really close to the airfield. They just have to cross, cross one more field. And there is a ravine here that will allow them to do so. Uh, that MTLB right, not making too much noise on the east. You can see it still has not moved from that original position just to make sure that this squad is not uh, heard and exposed. We have the Russians pushing the southwest right now. Humvees are now out of audio range. One sec. Both BTRs rolling up here. Two squad threes. They move northwest, cop. We're going to see uh, the Russians are now sending both BTRs to engage the Humvees. We'll see if they, they're able to catch these Humvees. Alright, let's stay on this side of the death and move up. Move north. Squad 4 and Squad 5 live now. We're going to be pushing in on foot uh, with the infantry here. And uh, you can see two times squads out here in the open.
BTRs. BTRs see the uh, Humvees. They're engaging now. And they're uh, they're not going to be able to kill those Humvees. Are a bit, a bit too fast. Couple shots landing and connecting, but nothing. Uh, not enough damage to pop the vehicles. Push that MTLB south, see what you can do about the supply lines. Call goes out for squad two to take his MTLB, cut off the supply lines on the south. And a lot of movement happening all over the map. Russians now taking the aggression right here. You can see Russians on the southwest of the objective pushing in pretty close. They're about 300 meters outside the wire. They'll be within the compound within the next five minutes. Uh, Xbit still building up his defense centerpiece around that uh, fob, but he has not committed any other resources to other parts of the airfield. We'll see if that either works for him or bites him in the back. We have Chappy squads up on the east here. They're going to try to interrupt the uh, Lodgy runs and those supply runs with the MTLB that he has. Uh, and still, the two U.S. squads on the north out of position at this Great, point we talked about spreading ourselves yeah, thin as uh us and if russia pushes more uh with aggression and pushes fast enough these two infantry squads on the north can be cut out uh a position rather quickly here and we're gonna see if shadow's able to exploit that and use that advantage right now he's got two infantry squads outside the objective russia now descending upon the compound we're gonna have that main assault i think happening within a couple minutes here his south infantry teams now breaching the wire we got a humvee patrol swinging around the south side of the airfield we're gonna zip on over here and see if this humvee is able to spot these russians these btrs in addition on the south supporting as well and uh, we're gonna we're gonna spectate the uh, major offensive here on the south. We have Muff live now on that south end. He's gonna be pushing into the wire right now. So far, clear. I don't see any investments there. All right, guys, let's start pushing up to these uh, hangers. We do see, see that, uh, ooh, that MTOB engages the Humvee, yep. takes out a couple right, US infantrymen, and he has uh, optics to engage these guys. Once again, these open top Humvees don't have that crow system uh, attached, so they do not have that range. MTOB, MTOB taking shots from the other Humvee here, and we're gonna zoom out here as we can see that these engagements with these vehicles happening at massive distance, 300 meters are uh, apart from either one of the vehicles. Humvee on the left, Humvee on the right, and that MTOB far on the north. We see RPG comes out from the US, does not connect, um, and that MTLB yeah, still keeping his distance, yeah, ensuring that it does not get uh, RPG, uh, excuse me, ladded or uh, double teamed by these Humvees. If he keeps the distance, he can use that optics to his advantage and engage these Humvees outside their effective range and uh, disable them. Directly to my cell, it was a dismount from the Humvee because we killed their gunner. Copy that. Nice, that's one Humvee disabled. Once that's again, for those of you who are having issues with the YouTube stream, YouTube servers are having issues processing the stream at this time. We do apologize if you're still having issues. Try to refresh the stream, but if that doesn't work, head over to twitch.tv slash squadops where uh, those servers are working fine and the stream is coming in crystal clear over there. Uh, so just a reminder that if the YouTube stream is not working out for you, check out uh, twitch.tv slash squadops and uh, that server is working fine. All right, the Russians now have full control over the hangars on the southwest side. It'll only be a matter of time until they spot that massive uh, Heska wall emplacement right, in the center go, of the airfield. And that will pretty much telegraph where the U.S. has hidden their fob. Both the vehicles now on either side, the Humvees and the BTR is playing extremely safe. Humvees engaging now on the MTLB. You can see those tracers happening far across the map, 300 meters uh, 300 meters out. They're a little bit too far to actually engage the vehicle. And uh, as you can see, it's extremely hard to see vehicles at range, especially with uh, the proper camouflage. We can see on the map, however, that both those Humvees are trying to break east and come uh, descend upon that uh, the MTLB from the east. So U.S. now in a in an awkward position. They have infantry outside of the point. Squad three right here might get caught off guard with this uh, descending uh, upon them. Is two U.S. squads, squad two and squad four. So we're gonna see if this Russian squad is gonna gonna end up getting caught. It does look like that squad has spotted 
Krusty's infantry over here. Uh, excuse me, Fulcrum's infantry over here. But this is a great distraction for U.S. Once again, we talk about give and take. If U.S. is able to take out this uh, squad while they do engage this infantry, as we see this, we have infantry engaging the uh, the Russians over here. Multiple casualties. Fulcrum squad is pretty much combat ineffective at this point. But with two squads engaged on this one point, if Shadow can read that pressure, if Shadow can properly revert his troops, he can really abuse the fact that this squad is catching this infantry out in the open and press on the U.S.'s weak side instead of trying to challenge them on their strong fronts. We'll see if Shadow reads this pressure and uh, put, picks up the aggression and is able to push on the point. We still have squad two on the far east, not really making any moves. Shadow needs to get these guys moving. If he does not move fast enough, squad three's losses will all be for nothing. We'll take a look at squad three here. I think they're all but uh, wiped. We have maybe three uh, Russians still over there, alive, taking fire from two squads now. Um, too effective now. So uh, Shadow really needs to be picking up the pace here. He needs to be reading this pressure, knowing that there's contact to the north and... Uh, being able to hit the U.S. on the on the weak sides, which would be the south. BTR engaging and on the uh, east here. I do think he does. I, oh, they actually get a Humvee. The MTOB on the east does spot one times Humvee and shreds him immediately. Uh, so that is a win for the uh, for the Russians right now. We can see that husk right here. And that MTOB now pushing off. So excellent work by uh, Squad 2's uh, vehicle gunners, taking out one times something. We'll take a look at the kills right here. Kind of even. Uh, U.S. pulling ahead just a little bit, um, and we'll see how that ha that that changes in the final assault here. Closing. Okay, I, yeah, I see that location. Squad 3 actually really close. That, that Humvee is actually engaged, that, that BTR is actually engaged, being engaged on buying and placed uh, 50 cal. Uh, he is putting accurate shots on. There's two times MTLBs over here, so I'm not sure if the US is going to be able to hold this and maintain this. Um, but yeah, there's now a full squad on the point at, uh, direct. A lot of HESCO and placements over here. Uh, we can see those BTR rounds really deterring anyone from using those uh, 50 cals. And now the U.S. is in a really, really uh, rough position. We talked about this uh, like multiple times throughout the stream. How getting caught out of position could end up hurting the uh, the Americans. And Krusty Squad gets executed by uh, who is this? By Larue Squad out here in the West. So Shadow really needs to pick up the aggression. We're not seeing enough aggression here from Shadow Ritual. Um, he's lo essentially lost his squad for nothing. He needs to continue pushing on the objective. Muff over here, they're making their final assault along this wire here, uh, using the uh, the the BTRs as cover. Squad 2, Chappie squad, still on the east side. Not really much movement here from the Russians. Shadow needs to pick it up if he, wa if he wants to take advantage of the U.S.'s uh, positioning right now. You can see now that aggression coming out from the squad on the east, but still, that's only one squad moving right now. He needs to be able to read this pressure and know that there's not enough defense on on the actual point. These BTRs, if if the Russians get control of the compound and are able to use the actual fence against the U.S., these BTRs, like we talked about before, using the massive amount of uh, using a massive amount of lines of sight. I don't know what's going on here. Th these BTRs need to be locking down that fob, but. They're out of position. Uh, yeah, but can you get in position to suppress that, uh, that bunker? We're moving our BRs up now to suppress. I'm not quite sure what happened there. They're in a good suppressing position over there. They had fire superiority, and they could have completely denied any shots from the south. This U.S. squad now, this U.S. squad on the point now, actually engaging the uh, Russians over here. I'm not sure if there are any casualties. There's one, one maybe two casualties out here. But uh, yeah, the Russian BTR is uh, engaging that compound. Actually, take out a couple U.S. infantry uh, uh, infantry now. over here. And yeah, that's at least one infantryman down on the uh, 50 cal out here. But like we talked about before, we need to see more aggression. These BTRs actually relieving the pressure, allowing this uh, Russian squad on the east to push up from south to north. They're going to try to get within frag range, I would imagine. Uh, Chappie squad still out here on the east. Not quite sure why they are so far off the point. Um, there's no real reason for them to be there. The MTLB has enough pressure on the east to maintain that by himself. So this is a weird allocation of resources on the east. They should be able to see that the Russian squad is now pushing command up alive? here. Um, yeah, command, uh, command alive. Oh, copy. 
Yeah, we're gonna see what happens here, but this is a really awkward assault. I'm not quite sure what I'm witnessing here. <laughs> but it's working, I guess. It's working. Uh, Shadow needs to pick up the pace before the rest of the U.S. arrive on point. Uh, he was not able to exploit that. He was not aggressive enough to take advantage of that. We see the U.S. Uh, lot, uh, trans here now pulling in with a full trans of U.S. soldiers. So he was not able to exploit that. Unless they're able to catch this trans in the open. Alfred. I have eyes on there. And they might, they might get spotted here. They, uh, they get spotted. But it's a little too, little too late right now. U.S. now on the point. Russians missed their opportunity to uh, get on the point. MTLB over here. Let's see which way he's looking. He's looking at the point. Um, so yeah, we're kind of seeing what's happening here. Russians now in a very bad position. They weren't able to capitalize on that uh, maneuver on the west. Two enemies upper floor of the brick building, direct north of my location. But these BTRs are are starting to put work, uh, putting damage on these uh, vehicles the or on these uh, buildings. Excuse me. These vehicles getting a little bit too close to these buildings. They are inflicting some infantry casualties, but at the loss of a, uh, but the loss of troops. Someone wasn't watching their door properly. He goes down. And Russians now <laughs> really taking this building aggressively. They're circling there. They're surrounded by their transport Do we have all their Humvees accounted for? I'm looking, he's, he's bandaging. Russians now looking to take this uh, building. He got hit from the behind. Both these Russians go down, but not after taking out the majority of this U.S. squad on the east here. That was the aggression we didn't need to see maybe five minutes prior. It's good to see that they're using the aggression now, breaching this building. However, this the rest of the Russian squad needs to follow suit and get in there before U.S. is able to lock down the building again. Uh, so really awkward timing here. We see aggression from two of the players, but not much follow-up. We'll see if the U.S. is able to lock down this building again or if these Russians are able to push in. These BTRs now on the east have spotted a U.S. squad in the open, and this U.S. squad is in big, big trouble. In the open against two, ar two three armored vehicles. They're not going to be man maneuvering out of that situation anytime soon. And they're going to get tied up on the outside. We did see how spreading yourselves thin uh, is causing quite an issue for the Americans right now. And uh, both these Americans now, aware that their building has been compromised, are locking down their respective doors. Uh, we're going to see how many... Uh... Oh, one of the vehicles actually goes down. I think that's the MTLB. MTLB gets popped due to small arms and a lat. Copy that. Or excuse me, a lat. Were they taking M fire or did they take another Russian's lat? still clearing this building right here. They took another lat. Copy. Well, hey, I'll, I'll fucking take it. That's three lats on, on MTLB instead of on the BTR. So. Much left. All right, guys, I have, uh, it's like right here. you're taking contact from uh, southwest as well. Yep, he's well. in the building. Two, is that that guy is here? I do. Three. Looks like a majority of them have fallen back right. to their little wagon. I'm gonna cover right. you. Go ahead and toss it. Toss into the first right. room on the right. Wait, is first floor not clear? First floor, first clear. Floor. Command to uh, Bad frag. Shame. For the order. Shame. 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 <laughs> Try and push <laughs> west into their actual uh, bomb location. So a waste first of a frag right. up here. There's still two U.S. soldiers up here. These can great. Right? These connect. Okay, back up. Get back up. Only two guys on the stairs at once. Another failed grenade. Oh lordy lord. And Russia is just failing to execute this breach. This Russian soldier with the aggression actually pushes in, manages to kill one. U.S. soldier tries to counter, but he zipped down the stairs already. We're gonna zoom out from this engagement. 
And, uh... Yeah, BTR is now pushing up. They have full control pretty much over these admin buildings. Russia still needs to finish clearing the second floor. They're losing a lot of troops to this building. And the Russians now pushing up, making a lot of uh, progress over hey, here on the east. Pony needs to get aggressive. Once again, we see a lack of aggression happening here. We need to see aggression on this point to get within frag range and uh, clear this bunker. The BTR has sufficient right, suppression on the target to where these infantry should be able to push up onto the point. But uh, not too much aggression here. The Russians finally cleared the building over here on the east. And this building is now under full Russian control. But once again, need to see that aggression. We see uh, infantry pushing out finally. We see frag grenades going out. Good GLs by this Russian soldier. Perfect use of the GL to get in behind that dead space, behind the uh, defenses. He takes out quite a few people. These Hesco's walls doing what they can. But it's not enough. This GL now in perfect position to start uh, sending HE rounds into the compound. And he's doing that with great effect. You can see that happening right now. You see those BTRs push up now. And uh, this Russian infantry squad getting really close to the objective here. Keep pushing in there, guys. Pretty methodical movement here. We have smokes coming in, and what we say at Squad Ops is smoke and push. So we're going to see a lot of aggress aggression coming out here after the smoke gets deployed. See Russians descending upon the compound. But a, a lone U.S. saw on the far east is going to lock this down. Frag grenades now in the compound. Boy, we're getting over smoke here. coming in, obscuring these lines of sight. Russians are pushing in now slowly. Humvee's still on the north. He's actually engaging one of the BTRs. This BTR does not see him. Oh, and that Humvee's gonna get knocked out here. Lat misses. This Humvee extremely low, but that gunner is knocked out. And I'm not sure anyone's gonna man that anytime soon. This is the worst possible position for the BTR. That smoke blocking that line of sight. And that BTR goes down. That was some really weird driving there by the uh, by the Russian. You can't, you must be aware of that smoke in the rear of your vehicle. He smoked himself off and was not able to see that Humvee. You need to be uh, mindful of those positions. But trading that BTR, Russians have taken the objective and they are currently digging up that fob. So Russians have completed their primary objective. Xbit splitting himself up a little bit too thin. Russians pushing in, like we said, with aggression. A couple hiccups here and there from both teams, but Russia has abused that, uh, has abused the fact that the uh, Americans are opposition and take the point. We have one lone US soldier here, and he gets taken out. Russians now have full control over the north side of the compound. We still see a couple of uh, lone soldiers on the south here. And they, we talked about this. Now the rush, now the U.S. is stuck assaulting the base. Oh, they're coming from outside the. And uh, U.S. in a very, very bad position. Russians have essentially taken over the compound and are using the compound's defenses against them. It's the people. Hey, pony, pony, pony. That grenade latching landing actually really close. Almost takes out all three. Four and one, they're moving along the outside of the fence on our west side, trying to swing in on us. Can you send a BTR over? Um, yeah, I'll... Krusty, I'm gonna send it over to fucking five. And assist go ahead, go, 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 go. And we're down to the last few uh, remaining U.S. soldiers here. I think there's three right here in this little uh, defilade, and then one up to the north.
But yeah, U.S. caught extremely out of position. Shadow not being aggressive as I'd like to see, but just getting it uh, enough aggression in to where he could complete the objective. And uh, he executes with uh, one BTR remaining. That last BTR actually rolling in over here to mop up this U.S. infantry. Yeah, yeah, I think these are the last there's no lats over here. Yeah, the ones who crushed three and just tried to swing around on him. And those GL rounds coming in from the south. You can see these US soldiers getting picked up the sides right now. Server arrow 404. Oh, and he goes There's down. Three out on our west. Follow tracers. And these uh, US soldiers right now are in quite a pickle. One lat actually goes out. I don't think it hit the BTR. It hit the tree in front. That was extremely close. And now these guys are going to get mopped up by that 14.5. Oh, the BTR goes down! Negative. Hold that mission. Yeah, that's down. However, his friend does go down. I believe this is the last soldier here. Position yourself on the southwest. Four is on the main compound, so you're gonna be on the southwest. One, one remainder. One, and that's the that's the stuff. grenade that I think will end the match. Okay. I think there's, I think that's it. I think that's it. I think we are good here. Russia completing their primary objective. They lost all the armor in the process, but they do have a, a substantial amount of infantry still left from that push. And I think that's. It's gonna tie up round one here if it. Oh no, there's one lone uh, U.S. soldier right here. Left. I think we got all the Humvees. There's a single U.S. soldier out here on the northeast on this BTR husk, I know one and he's going sure. to try to retake uh, the objective here. Lost all of our oh, and he goes down. And that's oh, GG. Know. That was round one of Operation Open Road here at squadops.gg. Thank everybody. you for watching. That was a one life event. Uh, we're coming back here with round two in just a moment. Yeah, we're going to take a small up. intermission here, pause the I stream and right restart. Now. We're going to try to pick a different uh, stream server uh, to accommodate for the YouTube channel. But yeah, stand by. We're going to restart the stream and we will be right back with the second oh, round. Good work, everyone. Great round. Great round.